Again, a subclass inherits the members of its parent. However, a subclass may want to change the functionality of a method that it inherited. This is allowed by overriding the inherited method. For example, a square is a rectangle, meaning we could have a square class that inherits from a rectangle class. And let's say one of the methods that was inherited was to calculate the perimeter. Well, the formula for calculating the perimeter of a square is different than the formula for calculating the perimeter of a rectangle. So while it's great that the square class inherits this method, that class needs to change the behavior of that method. This is called overriding a method. Let's code this very example. In this rectangle class, I'm going to create fields for the length, the width, and the sides. In addition to the getters and setters, let's create another method to calculate the perimeter. Now we'll have a class called square inherit from rectangle. We create the inherit relationship and we get all of the goodies for free, but we want to override this calculate perimeter method. To do so, we recreate that method with the same exact signature as the one that exists in rectangle. So I'm going to just copy this and paste it over here in square. And then we're going to change the implementation of the method. So for a square, it's sides times length. And notice I didn't declare size or length anywhere in here, but I inherited from the rectangle class. So this is how you override a method. Again, exact same signature, but change the body. Also, it's encouraged that you use the override annotation, which is the add symbol followed by the word override. This is not required, but is strongly encouraged. What this does is let Java know that your intention is to override the calculate perimeter method that you inherited from your superclass. Without this, we could unintentionally think that we're overriding a method, but not really do so. For example, if I were to, let's comment this out, if I were to mistype, for example, the name of this method, then this would be perfectly fine. Everything would compile, and I would think that I was overriding this method that exists in my superclass. However, I goofed up and I mistyped it. If I put this override annotation, this will let me know no, silly, you haven't overridden anything. This method doesn't exist. So that's a good clue to let us know that we're doing the right thing. In chapter six, we talked about overloading methods. Let me give you a quick refresher. Overloading methods is when you have two methods with the exact same name, but with different parameter lists. In chapter six, we looked at overloading methods within the same class. When dealing with a subclass, we can overload a method that we have inherited from a superclass, even though that method lives in another class. Let's update the rectangle and square classes to demonstrate how this is done. I'm going to create a new method in the rectangle class that simply prints out a statement. And then in the square class, I'm going to overload this by creating a method with the same name, but it's going to take a string. Now let's look at this in action. Now 
Notice when I attempt to call the print method, there's only one method available in this rectangle class called print. However, when I attempt to call print on the square class, there's two. There's the one that we inherited and also the one that we overload. We'll run this and voila.